Hello everyone. Um, I'm here to talk about your basic workplace rights and also the Institute's policy to deal with discrimination, harassment and bullying. Most of you will probably undertake some kind of work during your time in Australia. So it's important to understand firstly your right to work on your student visa and secondly your rights at work and in particular your right to be treated fairly and not to be subjected to discrimination, harassment or bullying. Firstly, um, your right to work. Okay. All of you will have condition 8105 on your student visa. This is a mandatory condition and condition 8105 imposes a work limitation and it provides one, you must not engage in any work before your course of study commences and two, you must not engage in work for more than 40 hours a fortnight during any fortnight when your course of study is in session. It's very important to abide by condition 8105 because as you're probably aware, a breach of that condition could be grounds for visa cancellation by the Department of Immigration and Border Protection. So work normally means an activity that attracts remuneration. So it's an activity that you would normally get paid for. Genuine volunteer unpaid work wouldn't fall within that. The work limitation also applies when your course of study is in session. Under the department's policy, in session means the duration of the advertised semester, including periods when exams are being held. So it's important that you refer to the MIT academic calendar for our advertised semesters so you know what they are. Fortnight means a period of 14 days commencing on a Monday. It's important to note here that 40 hours a week, a fortnight, sorry, relates to, a, to each 14 day period commencing on a Monday and can't be averaged over the duration of your course. So for example, okay, so for example, let's say you have a student who works the following hours over a period of four weeks. So week one, 15 hours, week two, 25 hours, week three, 25 hours, and week four, 10 hours. Okay, in this example, for the weeks comprising week one and two, there's a total of 40 hours, so there's no breach there. Likewise, for weeks three and four, which total 35 hours, there's no breach. However, for weeks comprising, the fortnight comprising weeks two and four, three, there's 50 hours. So that would be a breach. So it's important that you realise how the 40 hours of fortnight is calculated in practice. So, so you can comply with your student visa condition. Okay. Workplace rights or your rights at work. Everyone working in Australia has basic rights and protection in the workplace. This applies whether you're an Australian, a permanent resident, or a foreigner on a temporary visa, such as a student visa. Uh, let me make that clear. As an international student, you have the same basic rights and protection in the workplace as an Australian. These rights are covered in a number of Australian laws, but the main one is the Commonwealth Fair Work Act of 2009. This act sets out a number of minimum entitlements known as the National Employment Standards, or, or NES. These minimum entitlements include such things as annual leave, personal and carers leave, public holidays, and notice of termination and redundancy pay. Note, however, the NES entitlements apply limited to casual employees, as opposed to full-time and part-time employees who would get the full range of the minimum entitlements. So casuals, don't get as much as full-timers and part-timers. Um, in addition to the NES, there's also what's called awards. Uh, and awards set out minimum terms and conditions of employment, and importantly, minimum rates of pay. Uh, there's awards for specific industries, and awards cover most industries. So for example, the General Retail Industry Award that would cover the general indus retail industry and would cover someone, say, working as a shop assistant. Whereas the restaurant industry award would cover 
those working in the restaurant industry and would cover someone working as a cook or as a, as a waiter. It's important that you know whether an award applies to the work that you do, so you know what the minimum rate of pay you should be getting. Your employer can certainly pay you above award wages, but your employer must not pay you less than that. The Act also sets up a number of government agencies to resolve workplace complaints and to conduct investigations and to enforce Commonwealth workplace laws. So the two government agencies are the Fair Work Ombudsman, which handles workplace disputes concerning minimum work conditions and minimum pay and unlawful discrimination complaints. The Fair Work Commission, which handles matters such as unfair dismissal claims and unlawful termination applications, and also investigates bullying and harassment complaints. The Fair Work Act also protects employees against unlawful workplace discrimination. But it's not just the Fair Work Act. There are many laws in Australia, both at Commonwealth level and at state level, that protect people from discrimination, harassment and bullying, not just in the workplace, but also in general public life. At schools, at shops, clubs and other places that provide services. Okay, to give you an idea of the various laws, for example, at Commonwealth level, you've got the Racial Discrimination Act, the Sex Discrimination Act, the Age Discrimination Act, and the Disability Discrimination Act. And at state level, in Victoria, we've got the Equal Opportunity Act, and in New South Wales, you have the Anti-Discrimination Act. There's also government agencies, both at Commonwealth level and at state level, that hear complaints about unlawful discrimination, sexual harassment and bullying. So at the Commonwealth level, you've got the Australian Human Rights Commission and at state level, for example in Victoria, you've got the Victorian Equal Opportunity and Human Rights Commission. So what do we mean when we refer to uh, unlawful discrimination, harassment and bullying? And what sort of conduct would amount to unlawful discrimination harassment or bullying. Okay. In, in terms of discrimination, discrimination generally means treating a person unfavourably because of the person's attribute, such as their race, colour, gender, religion, age or political opinion. Unlawful workplace discrimination occurs when an employer takes adverse action against an employee or a potential employee because of their personal attribute such as an employer terminating an employee because of their religion or an employer refusing to employ someone just because of their nationality. Okay. Harassment is conduct towards a person that is reasonably likely to humiliate, offend, intimidate or distress that person. Sexual harassment is a particular form of harassment and that's also prohibited under Australian laws. Sexual harassment generally means unwelcome sexual conduct that a reasonable person would anticipate would offend, humiliate or intimidate the person harass. This could, inclu could include, for example, unwanted touching or unwelcome sexual advances or making sexually suggestive comments or jokes. Okay, bullying. Uh, bullying is repeated unreasonable behaviour towards a person that creates a risk to health and safety. Typically, the bullying is linked to someone's personal characteristics. So bullying can also be seen as a form of discrimination. Uh, bullying behaviour could include aggressive or intimidating conduct, yelling, screaming, offensive language, teasing, belittling or making humiliating comments. To amount to bullying though, it's got to be re repeated behaviour uh, that's unreasonable and poses a risk to health and safety. Okay. You can get a lot more information on these topics through the relevant government agencies. For further information about workplace rights, awards, minimum wages, you can visit the Fair Work Ombudsman's website. Uh, there's also a Fair Work info line where you can contact for general advice and information. For information about discrimination, harassment and bullying, you could visit the Australian Human Rights Commission's website 
and you can also visit the Victorian Equal Opportunity and Human Rights Commission's website. We've also got a couple of handouts which uh, we'll give at the end of the presentation and these are just some useful fact sheets from the Fair Work Ombudsman about workplace rights. Okay. Um, so not only do you have rights at work to work in an environment that's free from discrimination, harassment and bullying, but you can also expect to have those rights in a study environment, that is to study in an environment that's free from discrimination, harassment and bullying. At MIT, we've got a detailed policy to address this area, which is the MIT Equal Opportunity Policy and Procedure. The policy is published on the Institute's website and it's very important that you all make sure that you read through that policy carefully so you understand what's considered to be unlawful discrimination, what's harassment and sexual harassment, what's bullying, what's victimisation and so on. Uh, it also helps you to know how to make a complaint about such matters and how MIT deals with complaints concerning these matters. It's also very important to note that along with your right to study in an environment without being subjected to discrimination, harassment or bullying, you also have an obligation and a responsibility not to harass, not to discriminate, not to bully others whilst you're studying here. If you're found to have been engaged in such conduct, then this could lead to a finding of general misconduct and that could also be a grounds to suspend or cancel your enrolment. Um, given the time constraints, I'm, I'm, I'm just going to briefly cover the Equal Opportunity Policy and Procedure. Uh, but as I said, you really should refer to it, print it out, read it in carefully so you understand it properly. So Clause 1 of the policy sets out the purpose. And the purpose of the policy is to state the obligations of all those who are members of the MIT community with regards to unlawful discrimination, harassment, sexual harassment, bullying and victimisation and to set out the procedure to handle complaints in this area. Clause 2 is the scope and in general the policy covers all staff members and all students who are engaged in institute related activities, whether it's on site or off site. So this would cover conduct and behaviour that occurs on field trips. Uh, clause 3 sets out the definitions of key terms such as discrimination, harassment, sexual harassment, bullying and victimisation and essentially these definitions are adopted from the definitions under relevant Australian laws. Clause 4 is the policy statement which sets out uh, the general policy statement, the general objectives, the intent of the policy and examples relating to discrimination, harassment, sexual harassment, bullying and victimisation. Clause 4 also makes it clear that staff and, and students at MIT must not engage in such behaviour. Clause 5 recognises the right for students to make a complaint in accordance with the procedure set out in the policy if they have experienced discrimination, harassment or bullying. Okay, clause 6 sets out the requirements and the procedure to make a complaint. Uh, one important thing to note here is that a complaint must be lodged within three months of the incident unless there's exceptional circumstances. In terms of making a complaint, there's three stages to making a complaint, which is intended to be undertaken in sequence. In the first stage, you can seek advice from the student advisor. This would normally be the student services officer or even the student services manager. After obtaining advice, you can seek to resolve the complaint either directly with the respondent, the respondent is the person who you've alleged to have engaged in the unacceptable behaviour. Alternatively, you can ask a senior officer at MIT to speak to the respondent on your behalf. If a senior officer has been asked to speak on your behalf, the senior officer will convey to the respondent your concerns and reiterate the Institute's policy on equal opportunity. If the complaint can't be resolved at stage one, then you can request for it to proceed to stage two. So stage two is conciliation. This involves lodging a written complaint with a senior officer at MIT with a request for conciliation. 
the written complaint must set out details of the incident. The senior officer then reviews the complaint and if conciliation is determined as appropriate, will invite both parties to participate in conciliation and appoint the conciliator. The respondent is given an opportunity to provide a written response to the complaint. Conciliation only occurs if both parties agree to participate in conciliation. And conciliation is really a, um, it's a method of resolving dispute which involves appointing a conciliator to help the parties to reach a mutually agreed resolution to the complaint without the conciliator actually making a formal finding on the complaint. If a complaint can't be resolved by conciliation, then you can request for it to proceed to stage three. Okay, so stage three involves you lodging a written complaint with a request for an investigation to the managing director of the institute. The managing director will then decide whether to refer the matter for investigation or to take any other appropriate action. If the matter is referred to for investigation, the managing director will appoint an investigator to carry out that investigation. The investigator conducts the investigation, then reports back to the managing director. Managing director then considers the report and makes a formal determination on the complaint. This includes finding whether the complaint is substantiated and what appropriate action to take. So stage three involves a formal finding on the complaint. That's a very quick overview of the equal opportunity policy and procedure. As I said, it's very important that you familiarise yourself, read through it carefully, understand it during your time here. Okay. Um, let me just conclude my presentation by saying this. Many of you will do some form of paid work during your time here in Australia. Hopefully, your experience will be a positive one because, you know, working will help you develop useful skills as well as generate some income to help pay your fees. And hopefully your employer does the right thing. But if your employer doesn't do the right thing, know that you have rights and protection under Australian laws. Inform yourself of those rights. Don't be afraid to speak up. Seek help and support and advice. Exercise your rights and take appropriate action. Likewise, if you experience discrimination, harassment or bullying while studying at MIT, know that, that there are avenues for you to seek support and help. Know that MIT has a firm policy in place for, to deal with such matters, namely the equal opportunity policy and procedure. Refer to that policy. Okay, finally, thanks for listening and good luck with your studies.